I would like to uh, share this beautiful painting with you before I ship it out today. I have to crate it up in that. I just finished it a couple weeks ago. It was a prayer painting for people who are ill and for peace in the world. Under my signature, you'll find a heart with a cross in it like you find on my guitar. And beneath that, the word for peace. I'm a strong advocate for love and peace in the world. And I've been on a mission statement for a number of years of promoting Christ's commands of love and his new command, which is love your neighbor as I have loved you. The original two was just Love God most of all with all your heart and soul and love your neighbors as you love yourself. But there are many people who have good reason not to love themselves. So he came out with another one which he called his new commandment. Love your neighbor as I have loved you, and that is completely. In the last early part of this year, I spent a lot of time down at the Lone Cyprus. I was playing my guitar, actually some, some of my prints at first, then they told me I couldn't do that. And then they eventually said I'd have to, even though I, I wasn't selling the CDs per se, um, that I had to leave. And, there, and the guy was kind of a little bit mean about the whole thing. And, and he seemed like he objected to the songs I wrote about the Lone Cypress and the paintings that I did. And I'm not allowed to do anything about the Lone Cypress, which is BS. I think they didn't like the fact that I was giving out CDs on my peace painting that I sent to the United Nations. And the emphasis on love and not hate. Keep politics out of religion. When all, all one has to do is look at the sorry state of politics in America today, and perhaps in the world. It's more filled with hate than anything. It's contrary to God's law of love. And when they bring it into churches, churches are soiled. It, and politics that lead to hatred do not belong in churches. But to get back to this painting, uh, while uh, playing guitar at the Lone Cypress, which I did, and I was taking pictures of people, I reminisced on two prayer paintings I did of the Lone Cypress for young ladies in Australia who needed double lung transplants. Both of them received their double lung transplant. One, while I was working on it in the studio, had written a song for the young lady. And the first line in the song was, A shadow of a cross falls on a heart in pain. When I went down to record that song, there was a big shadow of a cross on my painting. And that was created by the picture window, but it had to shine up there and reflect back into it. I painted in the studio for years and I've never seen that. And then the, uh, the other one, the young lady, uh, when she was 21, told me she was being taken off the lung transplant list. And would I pray for her? And I did a prayer painting where I'd work on it every day. And every day when I'd start on a painting, I'd paint the painting as if it were in the morning. And throughout the course of the day, the paint would gradually go and change towards sundown. And I'd do that day after day. At the end of three weeks, she went in for a double lung transplant when she was 21. She's over 35, I'm not sure whether she's 37 or, or what. But uh, the lung transplant is still functional and then it was never rejected. And uh, while working on this painting, I thought about her. I didn't know it at the time, but she was in the hospital again. This time for close to three weeks. I contacted her mom. She told me she was doing better. I just about finished the painting and she was coming home. And uh, 
I'm not very much in contact with her for some reason, which is fine by me, but the, um, um, my attitude toward people I work with is to reach out, help them, and, and let them go their way. But anyway, I'm going to play a song that I wrote for the young lady, reminiscent about how we, how I met her in the first place, while we're watching this, looking at this painting. while to find the song. For some reason, I had this strange calling to go and see the lone cypress tree. Many of her friends had died, her young friends. Cystic fibrosis takes a lot of young people. I'm a strong advocate for organ transfers, which saved many people's lives. She felt so alone, so alone. Charlie was a beautiful child when I met her, and I encouraged her creativity. She was the first person that I shared Lord's water with. And her condition appeared to improve. She inspired a beautiful painting, a poem called Beyond Moongate, which I gave her as a gift. The prayer painting that I did before she received her double lung transplant, I spontaneously loaned it to a man who came into my gallery who was very ill with cancer and met his wife the night before and told me the doctors had given up hope on him. I said, come back tomorrow, I have some Lord's water for you. And then he went to buy one of my little Beyond Heavenscape paintings, prints I mean, it's very small. I gave it to him as a gift. Then I let him take the painting I did for Carly and bring it home. 
and the uh, a couple years went by and I never had it returned. I, and I specified this was a loan. Then one night I found their address and I was going to call them. The next day the wife called me without me calling them, saying her husband was well and he wanted to bring the painting back himself. I asked that they ship it up. Well, they never did. I called them later and they acted like they didn't. I had the wrong number, but I recognized the wife's voice. I was recently helping a lady who studied shamanic healing with a personal problem of her own. And she told me that the gentleman that I loaned the painting to, he and his wife probably felt that the painting did have positive energy that I said it did, and they were afraid to part with it, that somehow it was keeping her husband alive. If that were the case, it's very beautiful and it's welcome to have it. I, I, I didn't know what was going on at the time. Charlie blossomed out to be a beautiful poet and a writer. She has a certain amount of what one might consider Australian's directness in her language and what have you. But she's told me she was studying palliative care at the university she was going to in addition to her writing. So under that rough shell is a gentle person who loves her fellow man. She was the one who asked me to pray for Susie. I wrote the song, Susie's Prayer, the one where the cross was on her painting. She too had a successful double lung transplant. So I thank Carly for helping establish my mystical connection with the tree. Well, I was out singing at the Lone Cypress Tree. I did the smallest prayer painting of the Lone Cypress Tree that I ever did. I did this for a lady who sent me this small canvas, two and three quarters by two and three quarters. I was helping her with her art, and she met me many, many years ago when we both were a lot younger in my gallery in Gloucester, and she never forgot my work and always admired it. So I was always, I was helping her, uh, critiquing her work online and so forth. And she sent me this little canvas to paint to use in one of her doll clothes advertisements, and she developed cancer, had both breasts removed. So I thought I was in that mood with the Lone Cypress Tree to do a prayer painting for her. I love this painting. It just has a wonderful feeling of spirituality. I repainted the sky on Easter Sunday. I 
Originally it had a moon gate around the whole scene. It had some angels in the front. You may see it in some of my other videos. But I like it as it is.